How do we approach an unilateral cataract in a young kid? He is a 6-year-old boy and the parents get him to the hospital saying that they are seeing this white lesion in the eye for the last maybe a month or so. There's no history of trauma. This patient is otherwise very healthy and preliminary investigations were done. The otherwise absolutely normal and the eye scan also was normal in this patient. whenever we see an unilateral cataract trauma has to be an important etiological factor for us to keep in mind especially in children because sometimes they just hide the information so in this case the biometry was done and we are aiming for an residual refractive error of plus 2 in this patient the lens options which i had kept ready was a single piece hydrophobic lens and as well as a multi piece hydrophobic lens of the appropriate power in the case of any adverse events When we're operating on a child, two important differences we need to keep in mind when comparing it with an adult eye. Number one, the scleral rigidity is going to be very less. Number two, dealing with an elastic capsule. The incisions are created, the anterior capsule is stained, and time to perform the rexus. I am finding it difficult to puncture the anterior capsule with the forceps. That should raise me some suspicion. so i revert to my 26 number needle to puncture the anterior capsule and then with the forceps i am performing the rexus i realize that the most important step in this surgery is rexus as in most pediatric cataract surgeries so we need to get this rexus perfect because in the bag implantation and a well centered lens is absolutely critical in these eyes the rexus turned out to be pretty good I'm just trying to separate the lens matter from the anterior capsule. I'm trying to inject just a little bit of fluid under the anterior capsule to see that the lens matter is free and in this 6-year-old boy I expect the lens matter to be very soft. So I'm going in with my bimanual and a cannula to aspirate the soft lens matter. the first quadrant of the lens matter is aspirated quite easily and the hands are switched to take care of the lens matter from the opposite quadrant at this point i'm seeing a vertical line in the posterior capsule and which is very much looking like a posterior capsule tear so definitely their posterior capsule is torn and so at this point trauma as a etiological cause for this cataract is ringing loud in my head At the same point I quickly realized that the anterior hyoid seems to be still intact I don't see any prolapsed vitreous so gently I'm proceeding with a removal of the cortex so without removing the irrigation hand piece I'm injecting dispersive OVD from the side port at this point I am clearly seeing a small ring appearing under the posterior capsular tear suggesting uh, this is the area where the anterior hyoid is ruptured So at this angle as I'm pushing the OVD the ruptured anterior hyoid is very much visible. The anterior hyoid seems to be a little bit thickened and there's a lot of inflammatory debris under the anterior hyoid phase. I just want to remove uh, the remaining cortex before beginning my vitrectomy. I'm hoping that the vitreous is not at prolapse into the vitreous cavity as this last bit of cortex is being aspirated out. I can feel that the vitreous is already in the anterior chamber. So I'm going to use Tramsone acetate to stain the vitreous. Uh, you can see the vitreous peeking its way towards the wound. Uh, time to perform the anti-vitrectomy. The vitrector is takes care of the vitreous near the wound and then it is positioned below the level of the posterior capsular tear and below the anterior hyoid tear to perform limited anti-vitrectomy. I'm now using the cutter to nibble at the thickened anterior hyoid so that the visual axis becomes clear. Uh, there's a lot of inflammatory cells sticking onto this anterior hyoid and in a couple of minutes the entire visual axis is clear now. So at this point we can see that there is something which is tugging at the posterior capsular tear. The posterior capsular tear it looks irregular and it looks like it is peeking towards the side port incision. This is a definitive sign that the vitreous is prolapsing and it is heading towards the side port entry. The vitrector is pulled out and it is held at the wound itself and the cutting and aspirating action is begun 
and once that prolapsed fiber is taken care of we can see that the posterior capsular tear becomes regular and uh, the vitreous fiber which was tugging at it has been released. I proceed with my vitrectomy and basically cutting across the thickened antihyloid. At the same time I am also trimming the posterior capsule so that the visual axis is cleared and there is no posterior capsule in the visual axis. Once the vitreous is clear, the remaining bit of cortex is aspirated out. So now is the time to implant the lens. Cohesive OVD is used to create some space behind the iris and above the anterior capsule. Mind you, in these post vitrectomized eyes, the eye is going to be extremely soft, especially in a child's eye which has got very low scleral rigidity. So it becomes very difficult for us to negotiate a foldable intraocular lens with its cartridge in a 2.8 mm which is very comfortable for me in an adult eye. So one tip before implanting the lens, I would always prefer to enlarge the main incision from 2.8 to maybe 3 so that it allows easier insertion of the cartridge through the wound. Because we need to understand in a post vitrectomized eye, the eye is very soft, add on to it the especially in a child where the scleral rigidity is so low, it becomes very difficult to negotiate the cartridge through a very tight incision. So this is a very important tip, just enlarge it and so that the cartridge can easily slide in. And then because we have maintained the space with the sodium hyaluronate, which is critical, uh, the haptic can very easily be negotiated over the intercapsule and then subsequently the trailing haptic is dialed into the sulcus. So now we have the lens sitting nicely in the sulcus. Time to remove the OVD which is behind the IOL in the vitreous cavity. Tip number two, very important. When you're introducing the irrigation cannula through the left hand, it's important that we get down the bottle height to its minimum. Because in the children with very low scleral rigidity and also in post vitrectomized eyes, at the moment we introduce infusion, the sclera is going to stretch and the, there is a chance that the lens can be pushed back and sometimes can drop down into the vitreous cavity. Most important thing to do is to bring down the bottle light totally, negotiate the irrigation line into the eye, start the irrigation gently. Once the vitrector goes behind the lens and the process of aspiration of the OVD along with the vitreous using the cutter is being done, gradually we are going to increase the bottle height. So the message clearly is that avoid sudden uh, high infusion pressure with the posterior capsule open and the vitrectomy having been done. So slowly but steadily all the OVD which is there behind the lens is removed out. You can leave it, but there is always a risk of uh, raised IOP in the next day and some inflammation. There's a reason I always prefer uh, to remove the OVD. So once the OVD is removed, time to remove the OVD which is in front of the lens. Once the antechamber is clear of the OVD, time to trap the lens into the rexus margin. With the irrigation handpiece still in C2, I'm using a Sinsky hook to gently nudge the optic back so that the optic gets trapped behind the rexus. And this is confirmed by the ovalization of the rexus. We can see both the ends of the haptic optic junction, the optic has slid behind the rexus and this ensures excellent long term stability. So before coming out, I'm injecting diluted intracameral pilocarpine to bring down the pupil a little bit. I'm using a tenovicral suture to close the main incision, especially in children with the low scleral rigidity in a post vitrectomized eye. Sometimes hypotony can suck in the fluid in the conjunctile flora and there could be a risk of infection. There's a reason I'm doing this. The side ports are hydrated, intracameral antibiotics are put, that's it, the case is done. And these are the first day post-op pictures. The patient continues to do well. So few key points uh, from this case. In a child with a unilateral cataract, always keep traumatic cataract as a distinct possibility. In such cases, anticipate pre-existing posterior capsule tear and be ready with all the necessary equipment like vitrector and an inappropriately powered multi-piece hydrophobic lens. Number three, it's important to create space between the uh, iris and the cilia sulcus and using a cohesive OVD like sodium hyaluronate maintains the space and makes it easier for us to uh, negotiate the haptic into the sulcus. A slightly inexperienced surgeon can find it daunting to negotiate 
this into the sulcus and rather are intimidated and fearful of the fact that they might end up dropping the lens into the vitreous cavity. So this is one such trick to use a cohesive ovary. Number four, I prefer to enlarge the incision just a little bit so that it's easier for me to negotiate this cartridge through a soft eye in a post-vitrectomized eye. With the lens in, in a vitrectomized eye, with an open poster capsule, when you're going to remove the OVD, always begin with a low bottle height. Gradually increase the bottle height as and when required. So that was it. Thank you for watching and hope you found this helpful.